Here's a puzzle for you. Where outside of Germany will you find German-style buildings, bakeries where you can order bread rolls as Brötchen, and beer brewed strictly according to the German beer purity law? China. Austria. Spanien. Vielleicht irgendwo in Staaten. Polen vielleicht. It's Namibia, more than 8,000 kilometers away from Germany. In this southern African country, there are several thousand mother tongue German speakers, and around half the Christian population belongs to the German Lutheran denomination. The simple explanation for this cultural and linguistic anomaly is colonialism. The German colonial empire lasted just over 30 years, from the late 1800s until the end of World War I. During this time, Germany seized control of territories somewhat haphazardly from modern day China to the West Pacific. But Africa is where it made its biggest mark, eventually becoming the third largest colonial power on the continent after Great Britain and France. In 1884, Chancellor Otto von Bismarck invited representatives of other colonial powers to Berlin for the so-called Congo Conference. The result was a crude sharing out of the African continent. Straight lines were drawn on the map, boxing off territories with zero regard for ethnic or cultural divides. German colonial rule was brutal. Local populations were forced to work on plantations as well as paying tax to their colonial rulers. Indigenous uprisings were met with merciless violence. In 1904, the Herero and Nama people in Namibia, which was then known as German Southwest Africa, dared to resist German land grabs and inhumane conditions. A military commander under Kaiser Wilhelm II dealt ruthlessly with the two local groups. Some were slaughtered on the spot, others were forced into the desert where they died of thirst, and some were imprisoned in concentration camps. Up to 100,000 are estimated to have been killed, including 80% of the entire Herero population. It's now considered the first genocide of the 20th century. This Thema Genocid is fast every single day in the Namibian Zeitungen. The people are aware, they know very clearly, was Deutschland, was sie da gemacht haben. Sie sind fast 30 Jahre nach Ende der deutschen Kolonialzeit geboren. Wie hat diese Zeit Ihr Leben trotzdem beeinflusst? Ich bin so, so Apartheidzeit geboren. Als die Deutschen weggingen, kam die südafrikanische Burenregierung, kam das Macht übernommen. Damals war ich engagiert in einer jungen Gruppe von einer Befreiungsbewegung, Swanu. Und ich musste mein Land damals mit 17 Jahren verlassen. Und für mich war die Frage, was war dann davor? Und dann habe ich gemerkt, ach, Deutsche Westafrika, was haben die Deutschen gemacht? Völkermord gegen meine Volk. Und da habe ich gesagt, okay, wenn das so ist, muss ich dafür äh, mich engagieren. Weil ich weiß, die Folgen von heute, wenn ich in Namibia bin, ich sehe, wie arm die Menschen sind in Namibia. In 2021, the German government finally announced that it would recognize the massacre as genocide. It also pledged more than a billion euros for development projects in Namibia, although it stopped short of labeling these payments reparations. Some on the Namibian side argue the deal doesn't go far enough and that the money won't actually reach the affected communities. Deutschland muss nicht vorschreiben, was wir brauchen. Das ist ein alter kolonial Gedankengut. Das heißt, wir bestimmen, was wir wollen und welche Richtung, aber nicht Deutschland. Another question being asked is what should happen to these kind of artifacts that have found their way into German museums and galleries? I'm at the Humboldt Forum in Berlin, which houses tens of thousands of artifacts from around the world, many originating in former German colonies. This room is dedicated to items from Cameroon. We go very transparent with them. And we work with our international partners to make sure that these collections are being collected. That means we are researching the origin, the provenance. It's not all stolen. Es gibt auch da Bereiche, auch in, dem, in der Zeit des 19. Jahrhunderts, es gab Geschenke, es gab Ankäufe in der Zeit, es gab Sammelreisen, auch das muss man genau erarbeiten, unter welchen Gesichtspunkten sind diese Sammlungen entstanden, wie viel Druck ist aufgebaut worden, in welchen Zusammenhängen ist dort gesammelt worden, was sind da die Unrechtskontexte, das lässt sich nicht so einfach herausfiltern, indem wir einfach sagen, wir geben alles zu. Germany is often praised internationally for its attempts to acknowledge and atone for the atrocities of World War II and the Holocaust. And yet this violent colonial chapter seems to be largely absent from school textbooks, the TV schedule and general conversation. Ich äh habe mich da noch nicht so sehr mit befasst. Sich damit auseinanderzusetzen ist wahrscheinlich unheimlich schwierig und auch eigene Fehler dann äh, einzugestehen. 
Ich glaube, auch in beiden Teilen wurde diese Geschichte nicht so sehr vermittelt. Ne? Ich habe darüber in der Schule ähm, viel erfahren. Ich halte es für eine wichtige Facette, aber es ist eine Facette in der durchaus facettenreichen deutschen Geschichte. Und die beiden Weltkriege sind schon ähm, aus meiner Perspektive ähm, einschlägiger für das Hier und Jetzt. Some experts argue that this era not only deserves as much attention as the Second World War, but that the two periods are inextricably linked. Ideas about racial purity and selective breeding were explored by German colonizers. The skulls of African victims of the oppressive regime were even sent to Germany for a type of racist genetic research known as eugenics. All this was an ominous precursor to Nazi ideology. Right now I'm in Berlin's African Quarter, where you'll find streets named Togo, Cameroon and Congo. This area was supposed to be the site of one of Germany's many human zoos, where both animals and people from perceived exotic countries would be put on display. These attractions were especially popular in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Walk along Kongostraße and you'll meet Luderitzstraße, named after one of Germany's earliest colonizers. Activists have campaigned to get this name changed, but a quick look at the map shows that there are plenty more where that came from all over the country. With reminders of the colonial era still present on so many street corners, how much impact does it have on issues like racism in Germany today? Anti-schwarzer Rassismus äh, wurzelt im Kolonialismus, denn um äh, die Invasion von anderen Ländern und die Unterwerfung anderer Kulturen zu legitimieren, äh, wurde natürlich Rassismus äh, konstruiert. Natürlich sind diese Bilder über Menschen afrikanischer Herkunft oder AfrikanerInnen ähm, ähm, älter äh, als auch äh, der Kolonialismus äh, und wurzelt natürlich im transatlantischen Versklavungshandel, wo auch die deutschen Vorläufer Staaten eben auch impliziert waren und beteiligt waren. Black Lives Matter und ich glaube aber insbesondere eben auch das Video vom Mord an George Floyd haben tatsächlich auch eine gewisse Aufmerksamkeit für diese Themen geschaffen. Now it's over to you. What do you think about how Germany deals with its colonial past? <lacht>